So I'm kind of, I assume I'm kind of rookie to all those science nerds. Um, I have to apologize this, for this, but there is some correlation between what I've come from and what we, where we can go to. Because actually, I'm coming from the entertainment industry, uh, spent a couple of years as a film operator and in the marketing department. And of course, I watched a lot of movies and I assume most of you know them. And I spent a time, at a certain point, I tried to realize, you know, why some characters become a hero and why some characters are you not know, interested in. Um, so I investigated in what makes a hero, because actually, as most of us, hopefully, I wanted to become a hero. And funny, there was Aristoteles back in the Greek um, who found the blueprint for a hero story. And actually, if you want to live a happy life, you just have to follow his um, recommendation about how to uh, tell a great story. So, because all these hero stories you see from Star Wars, Star Trek, and so on, um, they start with struggle, they start with a mission, and of course they somehow start with pain, and so it's reaching for this goal. It's a very emotional thing, and I like to sing, because that's why I went to the movie industry. Uh, but then I figured out, you know, if this is the perfect blueprint for a fictional story, you know, couldn't it be the perfect blueprint for a perfect life in general? And I discovered that if you look to the scientists, there is a kind of similarity, you know, because most of the scientists after a while become great movies. And uh, so I said, okay, he's doing this, okay, yeah, great, it can work out, you know, um, Edison, you know, his, off, his lab was burned down several times and he kept on moving, you know. He has his idea about what to achieve. It changed time from time, but he was, his, he was on a kind of a mission. And um, so that's where I thought out, okay, you know, what's my mission? I won't tell you that. Um, but I just discovered that there is a kind of a uniqueness of this when you have access to this emotional part of this. So that's, for instance, why I run this thing here, and hopefully you know this. Who knows Ted? Okay, can you tell the other how great Ted is? Good. Awesome, yeah. Um, uh, and by the way, we did a, a con TED conference, first world premiere of the tele-robotic thing you just saw from, uh, from Aztec. So if you Google at YouTube, you will find the video. And it's just like the normal extension about of this storytelling thing. It's now at the TED conference, we are looking for those fascinating hero stories. It doesn't mean, no, it no longer means that it needs to be a scientist. You know, everyone can now be this Grand Edison thing. And I was thinking during the last year how to scale the whole thing. And I said, you know, yeah, everyone can be a hero. Everyone has a story to tell. It's really, I can tell you this because I'm curating many programs and most of the people I approach to become a TEDx speaker say, oh, I don't think it's an interesting story. I said, no, guess what? It is an interesting story. It's your personal story. And that's why I want to invite everyone more to become a hero, a personal hero and a scientist. Because if we look at what happened during the last, let's say 10 years, we now have access to information. Um, we are able to, form groups, communities, and voila, and something else. You know, we have access to data, uh, and we've developed certain services. You know, of course, we've developed cat content as well. So, yeah, there is demand for cat content, but there is a lot of, you know, without any structure, there was a demand to develop something like Wikipedia, and that was basically my idea when I get, got in contact with Easter. It was... Like, okay, in the beginning it was nice astronauts, nice rockets, you know? But then it turned out, okay, it's actually, it's more about the satellites. Okay, here are satellites that leads to data, and data leads to information, and information leads to knowledge, which is, has hopefully a great impact for the future of mankind. Whereas I thought, okay, you know, if we are able to organize ourselves um, in terms of Wikipedia and in terms of information, and if you look at Barkham and the thing we are have, having right here, there is the demand now for a next level, instead of just consuming information, turn it into action. And I said, hey, it would be great, you know, satellite data, some infrastructure is already there, there is a normal demand to improvement. And I said, yeah, let's do something with satellite data, build a public network, whatever, have fun with it. And it turned out, nope, station is locked, you know. 
Uh, I can give you now an hour presentation about the unopenness of public data and within the European community or uh, the European uh, uh, countries. That's quite boring. So I gave up, you know, to convince them to open the data. That's why I said, okay, you know, it actually makes fun to play with data. Um, so there is this commercial sector. It's already established, you know. Uh, what I'd like to do, or um, a bunch of guys would like to do, is now build the opposite of it, which means the public sector, where we have access to data, where we're able to develop new things, where we can educate people about, oh, how those data relates to science and so on, where there is a great opportunity to involve people in terms of educating. This can range from kids to adults, you know. It's the source for, I assume, entrepreneurs, so the guys from the Space Startup Weekend. If they don't have access to the data, you're not able to start a startup, you know. So, and that was my, you know, after doing this research, I said, yeah, you don't have any access to data. Well, how can I start up, how can I start a startup? And um, so that's the, the big picture. Because if you look at what kind of service we've developed, it's quite easy, you know. You just have to align them to the different layers of an open geodata system, which means, okay, you have to distribute the data, which at the moment is a big problem. It's centralized. I could talk for this for hours, but let's say if it's distributed like BitTorrent, it's quite easier to access. No, it's raw data, so you have to enhance data. Now you can develop software project who just take care how to enhance uh, the geodata coming directly from the satellite. And for that, you of course need to develop some software now. And this should be opened, you know, because there is already the advantage of having open software. Then you have to organize things and projects, which means a hackathon, something like on the web. And of course, it's a community and communication thing. So um, this is like really like the big picture, uh, but it's more like, you know, the rearranging all the services, technologies and communities we already have. It's just like, you know, bringing this more into a context in terms of, okay, now we can use the whole infrastructure and the learning we have from this different service, for instance, to use it for uh, geodata. So, you would say, okay, it's a big thing, you know, I don't want to scare you. Uh, if you want to join our um, mission, we are looking for funding and so on for a non-commercial uh, project, which is kind of crucial, because it's really like about building the infrastructure for this. So. There are many people who say, okay, data is the oil of the future. And I'd say, okay, but someone has to build some pipes, you know, where the oil can flow through. And that's basically the idea of the system. So, but to simplify all things, I brought you three events, you know. So, it's like um, with Data Nuts, that's a TEDx conference. It's happening in September in near Frankfurt. And it's a competition where we invite everyone to develop ideas that are somehow related to data. Uh, we have data sources from OIMETSAT, uh, so it's weather data. We have data from the National German uh, Library, so you can do anything with Goethe, Schiller, or Beethoven if you want. Uh, you can use any kind of data sources, and we really like want to approach everyone. So it's not like for the geeks, for the nerds, for the developers, because I think many people without having the strong develop a technical background have greater and better ideas than those who are really deeply sitting in a topic. And that's where we say, okay, if you have an idea how you can improve society with data and uh, turn maybe data into knowledge, then this is your, um, this is your chance to become a TEDx speaker. So um, submission ends by the end of April. So if you have any questions, you know, just ask me, and you feel, well, it's really like ideation. It's feel free to save the world in any kind. If it involves data, yeah, that's the perfect one. So this is more like the big picture thing. Another thing we are running in Frankfurt is the International Space App Challenge. So it's uh, sponsored by NASA and ESER, and it's happening in Frankfurt, 40 attendees. Uh, it's more the entertaining way of doing a hackathon. So. On Friday, we will have some sessions with scientists from CERN and ESER, and uh, NASA will announce some um, some challenges. And then on Sunday and Saturday, we will form teams to find solutions um, for those challenges. So it's really 
this competition as well is for everyone who is interested in having a great and inspiring weekend in uh, Frankfurt. So it's free as always. So, and it's this is kind of funny. Who's from? Where is Australia? Australia is gone. Oh, there. Yeah, because uh, actually we. Um, this is stem.com. It's a plat. It's a startup from Australia, and four guys. Who knows them? Uh, great. Okay, and, and and that's a public platform. It's more like the first puzzle piece for this big picture I just showed you. Uh, we're free to submit your space-driven project. So it may be like a cube satellite, it may be a rover, it may be a rocket, it may be whatever. So it's, and not only space, yes. And um, we're in discussion with them and we're kind of happy to first of all offer you free invites because they're still in beta. And uh, in Frankfurt we will soon launch a community where we hopefully can link people who are involved in projects to meet really face to face. So um, there's another opportunity to get involved, to get your hands dirty. And it's, it's a great, a lot of fun because there are many students in there and there hopefully in the future when we have more projects that uh, we will see like a vivid community talking about their project and wh what they can do. Yeah, so that's basically uh, everything I can offer you from now. So now it's your task uh, to turn yourself from zero to hero. Um, and one more thing, I got free stickers. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, two or three quick questions. Who wants to go to? Come on. Who has already Who wants to submit an idea? Who wants to become a TEDx speaker? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. There is fire in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much.